Hi, I'm Adam with MRO Electric, and today I'll be talking about ITAC and OIAC trips on the Unidrive Classic and in the Unidrive SP. While both these trips are caused by overcurrent, there are a few key distinctions. An OIAC trip occurs when the drive's output current hits 225% of the drive's full load current. This is done to protect the drive's hardware from becoming damaged. On the other hand, the ITAC trip is caused when the drive sees a slight overload of the motor's rated current over a given amount of time. A small overload of the motor will cause excessive heat buildup and failure. Although the ITAC trip is caused by current, it's actually warning you about motor heat. There is a difference between the drive's rated current and the motor's rated current. The drive's rated current is on the drive's label and cannot be changed. The motor's rated current is set by the user in parameters 46 or 507. Both locations control the same parameter and one will update when the other is changed. Because the drive's rated current cannot change, the external cause of an OIAC trip must be corrected or in the case of a faulty drive, the unit will need to be serviced. The ITAC trip is caused by an accumulator that increases and decreases its value based on operating conditions. The given amount of time I talked about earlier is really how fast the drive accumulator reacts to motor overload conditions. The accumulator can be made to increase faster by setting the time base lower. Now this time base is found in parameter 415 and the accumulator uses the time base, the motor's rated current, and the current at its output to calculate the accumulator value. When the value of the accumulator hits 100, you're going to see your drive trip. To run this test, we turn it on, set the speed reference to the maximum, and put the drive into run. As the drive accelerates, the motor accumulator increases. And even though the motor has now hit its final speed reference, the accumulator value continues to increase. This is because the drive believes that the motor is of a lower current rating than it actually is. And there it is, an ITAC trip. Even a perfectly functioning drive and motor in the correct setup can throw the ITAC when parameters are not set correctly. Now that we know what the ITAC trip is, let's see how the math works. Both drive manuals give us this equation to tell how the accumulator gets its value. This formula is known as an I squared T algorithm and is used in many different electronics. Most industrial motor drives will use this algorithm in some fashion to protect the motor. The I squared T is used to protect winding damage from heat based on current. Looking at this formula in a manual isn't much help but when it's graphed out, we get a clear picture of how this trip works. In Desmos, we can see the curve rises sharply in the beginning, then levels off towards a limit. Now this graphed curve is the accumulator's value. The blue line here is where the accumulator will hit 100 and the drive will trip. The x-axis tells us time in seconds. And we can use the crossing of the accumulator's value with the value of 100 to tell in seconds when the drive should trip. You can see from my variables on the left, my current that the drive sees is greater than 105% of the motor's rated current in parameter 507. So, with such an overload and a time base set to 20, my drive should trip at approximately 33 seconds. As I turn the value that the motor sees down, less than 105%, the accumulator value levels off before it ever trips. This shows a drive operating under normal conditions that won't trip out to an ITAC. Now, if I increase the current back up to where the drive will trip, I increase my time base, to let's say 89, which would be the default value for an induction motor, trip point increases to 147 seconds. So we can increase and decrease the time it takes for the drive to trip by changing the value of 415, that time base. If we lower it, the drive should trip in only 13 seconds.
As I demonstrated, a trip code doesn't always mean a faulty motor drive. The ITAC trip is designed to detect issues not with the drive's current, but with the motor's temperature. Adjusting the parameters on a new installation can prevent the trip from occurring. But if a drive that has been functioning for some time starts regularly throwing ITAC trips, then there's probably something else going on. For drives in closed loop vector, tuning the motor's rated speed can reduce current demands and eliminate the trip. Increased loading conditions on the motor can cause this trip as well, including binding on the shaft. An unpowered induction motor shaft should be able to be turned by hand when it's uncoupled from the load. The motor's insulation could also be failing. It's an older motor you should have it checked with a meager. Issues with feedback devices can cause the drive to react poorly to operating conditions. Check the encoder and resolver lines for noise and double check the device is securely coupled to the motor. When troubleshooting an OIAC trip, look for what caused a massive spike in current. The motor was accelerating or decelerating when the trip occurred, you should turn time up for both of those. For trips that occurred as soon as the drive was put into run, check that the output is not short circuited, either to the motor or internally. Keep motor leads as short as possible. The manufacturer specifies cable lengths for each frame size in the manual. Now, if you've checked all these things and are still experiencing trips, you may need to send your drive in for repair. MRO Electric offers repair services for the Unifoot Drive Classic and SP. We also offer resupply on these drives with same day shipping available. All remanufactured and repair drives come with two year warranty on all hardware for any defects. You can request a quote from sales at MROelectric.com or find us on the web at MROelectric.com. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell.